All right, this is chapter three, lesson three, multiplying rational numbers. So when I'm multiplying rational numbers, remember we said rational numbers look like fractions or can be anything about fractions, but really rational numbers can be anything that we really dealt with since kindergarten, first grade, so any type of number, okay? So, but usually when we're talking about rational numbers, we're gonna talk about fractions. So, to multiply fractions, I multiply the numerator and then multiply the denominators. So basically, you just multiply straight across. So looking at numbers, I have one half times two thirds, so I multiply one times two, which is straight across, and two times three, which gives me two sixths, and then I reduce it to one third. In algebra, AB times C over D, I get A times C over B times D equals AC over BD where B and D cannot be zero. Because remember, if you divide by zero or have a fraction with a zero in the denominator, that's bad. You can't do that. It's illegal in mathematics. It's one of the only like hard and set rules that you cannot divide by zero, okay? So here's a, an array version of multiplying by fractions. So you can see my problem is two times, two sevenths times three fifths, okay? So I'm multiplying I broke it down. I broke down one of my squares into seven sections, and I colored two of them. Okay, so that's my two sevenths. Then I took that same square and I kept it with seven, seven going across, and then I did five going vertically. Okay, and then I colored three fifths because it was three of those, three groups. Okay, so the part where they overlap, you can see that they've colored that purple. The part where they overlap, that is what your new fraction is going to be. So the six, okay? So six is where they overlap, but there's 35 squares, which is how I got the 35. So you're still multiplying. Two times three gives you the six, and seven times five gives you 35, but this is a visual representation of doing that, okay? All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples. So find one six times two thirds. Remember that dot means multiply, okay? Same thing with the X or the dot, they all mean multiply, so do um, parentheses. So one six times two thirds, write the product in simplest form. So I do one times two, which gives me two, six times three, which gives me 18. I can simplify both two and 18, and I get one ninth. If the fractions have common denominators in the numerators and denominator, you can simplify before you multiply. So, for example, with this problem, 1 6 times 2 thirds, I can notice that 2 and 6 have common factors. So I can simplify 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is three, and now I can multiply. One times one gives me one, three times three gives me nine, okay? This is um, a lot easier when you have larger numbers. So when you're simplifying things like that, it makes more sense to try to simplify before you do this, as opposed to at the very end, because then you're dealing with larger numbers. So this way you're actually dealing with smaller numbers when you simplify earlier. All right, let's take a look at another example. Find each product right in simplest form. Three fourths times negative seven ninths. So again, rational numbers can be positive or negative. So we're still dealing with the same type of thing that we dealt with when we're dealing with integers from last chapter, okay? So I still multiply, but I noticed that three and nine have a common denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify those first. So three cancels out to be one. 9 cancels out to be 3. Okay. So one, when you do this cancellation, 1 has to be in the top and 1 has to be in the bottom. So when I do that, I get 1 times negative 7, which is negative 7, and 4 times 3, which is 12. You don't have to simplify first. You can just multiply through and then simplify at the end. It works the same way. Okay. For B, I have 2 and a third times 2 and 5 sevenths. So I'm going to change both of those into improper fractions. 3 times 2 gives me 6 plus 1 is 7, so 7 thirds. And 7 times 2 is 14 plus 5 gives me 19, so I have 19 sevenths. So again, I notice that 7 and 7, I can simplify that. 
So 1 times 19 gives me 19, 3 times 1 gives me 3, and then I change it back to a mixed number. So 3 goes into 19 6 times, and I have 1 left over. If I'm evaluating expressions with fractions, variables can represent fractions in algebraic expressions. So I evaluate 1 half AB if A equals 6 sevenths and B equals negative 4 ninths. And I write in simplest form. Remember that this does not mean that you just substitute the numbers in and that's it. There is an invisible multiplication there. I'm saying 1 half times A times B. Okay? So 1 half times 6 sevenths, because that that's what A was, times negative 4 ninths, which is what B was. Okay? I notice that I can cross simplify a lot of things. 2 can go into the 6, or 2 can go into the 4. So that means 1, and that becomes 2. 6 and 9 can simplify, so 6 becomes 2, and 9 becomes 3. And I multiply 1 times 2 times 2 gives me 4. 2 times 7 times 3 gives me 21. Or sorry, 1 times 7 times 3 gives me 21. And I had one negative sign, so my answer is negative. The first hill on a certain roller coaster is 255 feet tall. The first drop on another roller coaster is about 11 20th as tall as the first coaster. Find the height of the hill on the second roller coaster. So to find the height of the hill on the second roller coaster, I multiply 11 20th by 255. So I change 255 to a fraction by putting it over 1. And then I recognize that 20 and 255 I can simplify. So I get 4 and 51. I multiply 11 times 51 and 4 times 1. So I get 561 over 4 and then change it back to a mixed number. So I get 140 and 1 fourth. So the height of the drop is about 140 feet. All right, there are a couple of try problems out below. I want you to go ahead, pause the video, try them out, and when you're done, we'll go over the answers together. All right, now that you've had a chance to try out the try problems, let's go over the answers together. So for letter A, I have 1 half times 4 tenths. So you can either recognize that 2 and 4 I can simplify. 2 becomes 1, 4 becomes 2, so I have 1 times 2, which is 2, and 1 times 10, which is 10, which I can then simplify again, divide both sides by 2, so I get 1 fifth. For letter B, I have 3 fourths times 8 21. So again, I can recognize 3 goes in 21, 4 and 8 I can simplify. So I get 1 times 2, which is 2, 1 times 7, which is 7. For letter C, 3 and 3 eighths times 2 and a third. So I change these to improper fractions. 8 times 3 is 24 plus 3 is 27. 2 and 1 third is 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. 3 and 27 can simplify. This becomes 1 and 27 becomes 9. So 9 times 7 gives me 63 over 8 which I can change to a mixed number. 8 goes into 63 7 times. Which gives me 7 left over. So 7 and 7 eighths. For letter D, 6 ninths times negative 3 elevenths. So I recognize that 9 and 3 can simplify, so this gives me 3, sorry, this gives me 1 and 3. I can also recognize that 6 and 3 can simplify, so 6 becomes 2 and 3 becomes 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 11 is 11, and there's one negative sign, so negative 2 11. For letter E, it says evaluate each expression if x equals 3 fourths, y equals negative 2 and 1 ninth, and z equals negative 3 fourths. So I have x, y, so that's 
3 fourths times negative 2 and 1 ninth. The negative 2 and 1 ninth I need to change to an improper fraction. So 9 times 2 is 18 plus 1 is 19. So I have negative 19 ninths. Multiply that times 3 fourths. 3 and 9 simplify. So 1 times negative 19 is 19. And 4 times 3 is 12. This is negative, of course. 12 does go into 19 one time. With 7 left over, so one, negative 1 and 7 twelfths. For f, I have 3x, so that's 3 times 3 fourths. So I can write this as 3 over 1. There's nothing I can simplify. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times 4 is 4. I can change this to a mixed number. 4 goes into 9 twice with 1 left over, so 2 and 1 fourth. For G, I have X, Z, so X is 3 fourths, Z is negative 3 fourths, so I multiply. They have nothing in common, so I just multiply, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, one negative sign, so I have a negative 9 sixteenths. H is X, Y, Z, so I have 3 fourths times negative 2 and 1 ninth times negative 3 fourths. We said negative 2 and 1 ninth was 19 ninths. So I have 3 fourths times 19 ninths times 3 fourths. Okay. I can simplify some stuff. 3 goes into 3 once. 9 3 times. Cancel that out again. So I get 1 times negative 19 times negative 1, which gives me 19. 4 times 1 times 4, which gives me 16. I have two negatives, so my answer is a positive. 16 goes into 19 one time with 3 left over. So 1 and 3 sixteenths. The letter I have y times z, which is negative... 2 and 1 ninth times negative 3 fourths, okay? 2 and 1 ninth changes to 19 ninths times negative 3 fourths. Simplify. 19 times 1 gives me 19. 3 times 4 gives me 12. I have two negatives, so my answer is a positive. I can change this to an improper fraction. 12 goes into 19 one time. And then I'm left with 7 twelfths. So 1 and 7 twelfths. That is the end of Chapter 3, Lesson 3.